All right, let me do our um, script and then we'll jump into business. Um, this is Christine Deschler, Chair of the Arlington Finance Committee. Uh, I'd like to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. When I call off your name, please respond in the affirmative, uh, starting with Jordan. Here. Shane. Here. Jennifer. Sorry, Jennifer. here. Yes, yeah, sorry. Sophie. Here. Brian? <coughs> Is Brian here? It's, it's Carolyn. Carolyn here. I don't think Carolyn is here. Rebecca? Here. Josh? Here. Grant? Here. Charlie? Is Charlie here? Charlie's not here. He's here. He's just muted. Charlie, you need to unmute. No, he isn't. Here. All right. All right. Uh, John? John Griffin is here, right? Yes. Daryl is not here. Annie's here, right? Here. Alan Jones? Here. Topher Hyam? Here. Peggy? Here. Al Tosti? Here. Dean Carmen? Here. And Dave McKenna? Here. And Tara Bradley? Here. All right. Um, this is other than Sean and ACM, I don't see any members of the public present. Is that correct? I think that's correct. All right. Um, this open meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, as extended on July 16, 2022 to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus in order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus. We have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access do not, does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment only in writing by email to tbradley at town.arlington.ma.us.com. For this meeting, the Arlington Finance Committee is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join and comment. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating, I guess all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folk may be able to see you in that um, you should take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Before turning to the first item on the agenda, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote and the chair will only vote in instances where there is a tie. Let's start with the, um, approving the minutes of our meeting on February 6th. Has everyone had a chance to look at them? Does anyone have any revisions or corrections to make? Anything, 
I don't see any hands. Um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. Right. Um, any further discussion, questions, comments before we vote to approve the minutes? All right. <clears throat> um, when you call your name, please say yes or no to approving the minutes. Jordan. Uh, I'm going to abstain. Okay. Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Uh, yes. Sophie. Yes. Ryan. Carolyn. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. Charlie. You muted. Charlie. Yes, sorry about that. Sorry. Right. John? Yes. Uh, Daryl's not here. Annie? Yes. Helen Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. Altosti? Altosti? Yes. Dean? Yes. Dave? Yes. There are 15 yeses, one abstention. Uh, so the minutes have been approved. All right, we will go now go into the meat of our meeting. Um, we have a couple of budgets that we have not finalized uh, or that we are revisiting. And I'd like to do those first if we can. Um, John, do you have an update on um, the discrepancies in the fire department budget? Yes, I spoke with uh, Julie Wayman this morning and I, oh. I, I, I think I resolved them. I can walk you through them quickly if that's okay. That would, um, please do. Great. <clears throat> so um, I'll share my screen here. Just give me one second. So it says uh, host disabled. Oh, yeah, sorry, you can try it again. Okay. Yeah, so. Uh, so uh, can you see the Excel spreadsheet here? I'm moving it up and down. You guys can see that? Yes. 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 Great. Okay, so um, so column E is the FY24 budget. That's the one that's in the budget book. Uh, column F was what I pulled from the payroll detail. And uh, shaded in yellow in column G were the discrepancies that I mentioned on Monday night. Um, over here, we resolved them. I'll start with the bigger ones first. Uh, so the 26,000 uh, discrepancy in the, uh, the EMT line relates to two different items. One is uh, an $18,000 benefit uh, referred to as riding to the rescue benefit. And it's, it's when, uh, when the, the firefighters ride in ambulances, they get, they get extra money for, uh, for being involved in an, an ambulance calls. Uh, I said, has this always been there? And they said, yes, it's always been there. Um, so that's, that's the $18,000 uh, amount is uh, for the riding to the rescue benefit. And then the 8516 relates to uh, the chief's EMP um, stipend. So 18K plus 8516 gets to the 26516. Um, the 15483 up here for the uh, school credit, that is the chief's school credit. And actually the school credit detail, which is, it's kind of just a separate item, it's called school credit detail up on SharePoint, does in fact include the 15483 for the chief. So that's his, uh, his uh, school credit item. Um, and then the smaller items, you get the 3242 on the top line, account 5100, and also the, uh, the $102 down in uh, line 5160, no, excuse me, line 5156 longevity. Those relate to, um, actually, I'm sorry, they're actually, the 3242 
I'm rushing a little bit. The 3242, as you can see the detail over here, that's actually the chief's um, <clears throat> superior benefit. And then also uh, a 1709 uh, change to the chief's salary. So a lot of it did relate to the chief's salary. She said she was going to send me over a full detail of the chief's salary. She didn't send it over, but, you know, she said that, you know, these items are all, you know, everything that was uh, listed here would be included in the chief's salary, other than really the riding to the rescue, the riding to the rescue item. So that's it. And then the small ones down to like $100, $150 differences. There was one master mechanic who, uh, who, is uh, in negotiations through the um, SEIU and they haven't resolved the negotiations yet. And apparently how they account for his, they're not sure if they should account for his uh, before the negotiations or after the negotiations, but that accounts for a small difference as well. So those are the numbers that, um, that she gave me over the phone. Everything seems to tie. I got it over the phone. Uh, the only thing I have really good documentation on is the, uh, the longevity item. Everything else, I just took notes on over the phone, but you know, it did it did make sense, and and the notes I took over the phone do tie. So, uh, so is is your recommendation um, to approve the fire department budget as printed in the town manager's budget, which um, is your column E, I guess? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. If, um, if, you know, if you have your budget book and yeah, exactly, I can go all the way down to column. The bottom of column E is the 8,654,593. That's the fire taxation total. So I would move to approve the fire taxation total of 8,654,593. Second. All right, so we had a discussion uh, on Monday night about everything but except these discrepancies. So I think uh, we've had a full debate about the rest of the budget. So right now, does anyone have any questions about the discrepancies that John looked into and just described? If so, raise your hand. Topher? Yeah, I just had one, if you can scroll back up. <clears throat> just on the chief's sure. salary. Uh, so like like cell N, I guess N8, I guess it is. Yeah. <clears throat> 391. <clears throat> yeah. Just that doesn't jive with what I saw for salaries in the book. So the chief, is that like two people or like the- Yeah, yeah, good, great point, great point. That is actually the um, chief admins. So- um. So if you click back on, it's uh, it's it is uh, it's the um. Oh, it's every okay. So it's yeah, a whole Kelly. Group of people. Kelly's the okay. chief, and then there's a few administrative folks, and actually the master mechanic is here as well. So yep, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, that's people. fine. I just I saw that number, and it didn't quite make sense. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. The chief would the chief space would be a uh, one fifty one. Jordan? Yeah, and um, pardon me if this question was already asked last um, at the last meeting, but um, the large increase in the EMT defibrillator pay um, that you clarified, um, uh, the increase in the discrepancy, and that's all um, the ride to the rescue. That is um, something that's part of the collective bargaining agreement, and I'm assuming that this projection was based upon um, an increased need for this, correct? Um, yes, yes. It, it, a partially increased need, but also partially a memorandum of understanding that was signed last June uh, outside of the collective bargaining agreement. That was, that's just, that did provide for a few bumps in, in the EMT and a couple of these other items. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, any um, more questions about um, John's description of, of uh, the discrepancies? All right, so I have a motion to approve the fire department budget as printed. Is there a second to that? Second. All right, any further discussion questions? All right, we'll take a vote on the fire department budget. 
Um, Jordan. Yes. Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Uh, Brian is still absent. Uh, Carolyn, I think she's still absent. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. Yes. John. Yes. Annie. Yes. Alan Jones. Yes. Topher. Yes. Peggy. Yes. Al Tosti. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. Dave McKenna. Yes. All right. So the fire department budget is done. Um, John, we're, are you and Daryl still working on the inspections budget right now? Yes, we're not ready to prepare it, to present that. Okay. All right, so let's revisit our, the finance committee budget that we looked at, I think, uh, last uh, week. First, uh, first night. <laughs> um, so um, I'm going to turn it over to Sophie and Dave, and um, let's, um, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, Madam Chair, if, if we could be allowed, um, remember that uh, Alan Jones um, made a motion after he, he located a discrepancy. So um, we're going to defer to Alan um, on his motion that was put on hold at, um, for, for further evaluation. So Alan, if, if you could repeat your motion that was put on, on hold. If you can repeat it and explain it. Okay, sure. The The explanation is that the um, total salary number included the $550 that was previously paid to the recording secretary, but has been moved into the executive secretary's um, funding. So we were double counting that $550. Um, it, it, it had been included in the uh, uh, other members' budget. So uh, what I had proposed was to reduce uh, the total personnel expenses to 8,353. Um, and then Charlie brought up the question about uh, the expense budget. And I sent out an email last week uh, that I'll have to dig up with uh, a breakdown of where the money uh, would go. And it's not that different from 2945. So I don't I don't have a compelling urge to change that, uh, but maybe uh, Charlie would have something to say about it. Um, I'll have to right, find so, my numbers. So um, on page 18 of our budget book, the salary and wages line item 5100 should be 8353. Correct. Correct. All right, which would which, which is five hundred fifty dollars less than the eighty nine oh three, and, and that changes the budget total to eleven thousand two ninety eight. Madam Chairman, yep, sure one. Sorry, um, so just a, a quick recap from last year. Last year, in order to not, we made the same change last year, which was the first time we moved the five fifty to. Um, the executive secretary's salary. And last year to not change the bottom number, we also increased um, the otherwise, the expenses by 550. So that the number at the bottom wouldn't change for the town. So our uh, 2023 budget per our uh, finance committee report was not 2945. I don't think it, right. It's not 2945. Last year, we changed it to 3495. So right. that is an option this year too, if we don't want to change the bottom number and keep the 11848. To increase the expense line. Right, by the 550, which is what how we dealt with it last year. The, I don't have a recommendation either way. I don't have the experience to know. Yeah, I think at the last minute we did, I mean, you're, you're right. And I think at the last minute we did that so that it wouldn't throw everything out of balance. But I think right. if we sort of, you know, make those changes early enough in the process, it, it, it shouldn't be an issue. In other words, if we don't have a reason to put that 550 into expenses, we don't need to to balance the books. All right. So 
Um, so if we were to, So there are two things we can do. We can just take the 550 out or just leave it as is, putting increasing the expense line. Yeah, we could leave the we could leave the bottom number as is and add 550 to the expense line. Or, or excuse me, you know, just shift the 550 from salary to expenses. But I I you know I don't know if there's a justification for that as opposed to just reducing the salary line by 550. There I can think of a justification this year is that we have uh, 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 the expense line, as you, I think people see, have seen with the details um, that were emailed around, uh, part of this expense line item is to pay for people to attend the annual um, conference. We do have a, a lot of new members and we have some new vice chairs as well. And I would be happy to see people um, go to that conference this year, uh, have a big delegation, especially with the new people. So I, 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 I can see a reason to keep that money in the expense line, but um, let's open it up for discussion. Charlie? Yes. Th thank, um, thank you, Madam Chairman. Can you hear me? I guess I'm on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, I would recommend uh, increasing the expense line by the 550. And I want to thank Alan for, um, and, and for the reasons that you stated. So I'm going to make that motion. And I want to thank Alan for um, providing the detail that he did in the email, because I think um, the entire committee has a right to understand what's going on in that line. Thank you. So, so Madam Chair, I'll revise my uh, motion uh, to reduce the personnel services to 8353 increase the expenses of 3495 and the bottom remains 11848 second is there a second to that all right second all right that motion has been made and seconded um there are a couple of uh, i think it, there have been a few questions um the conference is typically uh like october november right altosti the annual conference yeah, excuse me. The annual conference is usually in October or November. Uh, there's often a spring conference. Um, and then you have the MMA annual meeting in January. Uh, so there's lots of opportunities for additional training. And and I, I've attended those conferences and, and they're really they're really interesting. Um, and um, uh, not infrequently, members of the Arlington Finance Committee present at those conferences as well. So um, I, I think it's a really good opportunity for people. Um, so um, any other questions, comments? All right, so there's a motion made and seconded to um, move the 550 from the sal salaries line to the expense line for um, a total Appropriation of 11,848. All right, so I will we'll take a vote now. Um, Jordan. Yes. Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Uh, Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. Yes. John. Yes. Annie. Yes. Alan Jones. Yes. Topher. Yes. Peggy. Yes. Al Tosti. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. Dave McKenna. Yes. All right. It is unanimous. Um, all right. So we have completed the fire department budget, the finance committee budget, and now we will go back to um, Annie and Rebecca to finish their budgets. And I understand we have been joined by Christine Bonjournal. So welcome, Christine. Um, so uh, I'm going to cover everything in the HHS budget and the consolidating transportation um, enterprise fund. And then Rebecca is going to present on um, the AYCC 
enterprise fund. Um, I'm going to share my screen now, I think. And we will look at this page. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing I wanted to share with you is this graphic, which Christine graciously sent to me. Um, and this shows you the totality of the money flowing through the health and human services budget. Um, so this is the general fund exclusive of the ARPA money. These are the ARPA funds going into HHS. This is state money, mostly elder affairs funding. Um, there is some CDBG money uh, flowing through health and human services. As you can see, there's a large chunk here that is insurance. This is mostly supporting AYCC, um, where we um, file for insurance reimbursement. And then uh, part of that is co-pays from families. And then we have some money coming in from private grants. Um, a little later on, I'll ask Christine to say a few words about the opioid settlement and how we're gonna use that in the future, but I don't believe any of that income is uh, registered here yet. So this gives you the big picture of the extent to which health and human services is seeking funding outside of the general fund. So let's walk through the budget a little bit. Um, I just want to run through a few highlights on this budget. Okay, so in personnel, we have reduced by two positions. Last year, there was a, um, uh, it was either one of the health compliance officers or, one of the, public, or the public health nurse that was um, uh, vacant. That position did not get filled. And then we've gone down one more position this year. Uh, so if you look at these total positions, okay. Um, and last year we were funding 3.2 positions with ARPA funding and we had some uh, funding from an uh, income, outside income line called Medical Reserve Corps. The Medical Reserve Corps funding is gone, but the two positions that we are down were ARPA funded positions. So we are down to funding 1.61 positions with ARPA funding, which everyone involved is clear, those positions will not be able to stay in the budget unless another income stream is found to support them. Um, so that's what's going on with personnel. Um, you'll see on the expense side, uh, this $60,000 reduction in um, rent, don't get excited. Um, there is a concomitant increase in the facilities budget. And so that's really just a transfer from one budget to the other. You'll see similar amount in Council on Aging. It's really just a transfer from that budget over to facilities as facilities takes over more of centralizing um, maintenance and utilities. The contracted services that you're seeing in this budget is our contribution to the Somerville Homeless Coalition, which is a program we participate in across several communities that is trying to, um, I don't know, Christine, are they doing rapid rehousing or just trying to find housing? They do pretty much all different types of housing. So yes, they're a, a major resource for us in, in accessing housing in the region. Great. Um, and then the rodent control was the other line item where we're seeing some, um, not so much a big change from last year, but you can see that the actuals are very low which may make you wonder why we're budgeting at this level. Um, during the pandemic, we simply weren't getting as many calls for rodent control because restaurants were closed. And obviously we didn't have the staff to both deal with the public health crisis and um, major um, efforts on rodent control, but we are now back on top of that. And we are doing integrated pest management, which means that we are trying not to use poisons so it's um, dry ice into identified burrows and um, some new technology that um, I would describe as shock boxes. I'm sure Christine could give more detail if you wanted it. Um, so rats are being baited into the boxes and then they're electrocuted and accumulate and then the company managing those boxes comes, clears out the corpses and resets. Um, so that's what we're trying to do to get rid of um, rats. Charlie, 
if I can just finish a couple more highlights and then we'll do some questions before we go on. Um, the auto allowance, somebody had asked me about auto allowance that is for Christine and other staff using their personal vehicle for business travel. Um, and I just wanna point out that this 5.75% reduction is not really what you think it is because of the change in the rent. What we actually have is a 2.3% total increase in this budget. Um, so that's health and human services. Um, Chris, you wanna take questions here before we do the other sections? Sure, um, Charlie, you have a hand up. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Yes, uh, Andy, I have a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, one is, um, can we get some feedback on how effective the rodent control expenditures are? Are we actually succeeding in that area? And um, have has there been any uh, measurable decrease in the effect on uh, of, of rodent poison on uh, 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 wildlife, or aviary, you know, uh, raptors and that sort of thing? Um, could we direct that question to to Christine Bongiorno? Chris? Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Charlie, for that question. Um, so our uh, rodent control program, we tend to get complaints. Um, and you know if we if we find that we're getting multiple multiple complaints and the area um, is a pretty sensitive area. So, for example, we've got an issue going on at um, a school right at the moment. Actually, there are a couple of schools. So we're we have um, dispatched those shock boxes, as Annie called them, to those schools. We are able to collect data and see how many um, rats are collected, and um, you know it's, it's real time. So they're reported real time, which is really helpful. And we're able to then move them to different sites as um, we we see a decrease, and we in as we see a decrease in complaints. Um, in addition to the sh those boxes, those those um, shock boxes, we also we look at um, trash removal, making sure that there's no source that's that's drawing these pests in. We also make sure that our, our buildings are secure and safe. Um, we do not use pesticide and have not used pesticide. Um, and in fact, there is a new policy townwide that there is no um, second generation pesticide to be used on any town property. Um, that's been in place um, on the school side since uh, probably two, since 2000, because that, there's the Children's Protection Act, so there's been no pesticide use in the schools. Um, but on the town side, we just adopted that um, just recently. So we, we as the health department, have never um, used pesticide to as a method to to kill rodents. Um, we've always used dry ice, and now we've employed the um, the shock box uh, method, which just helps us gather data. We are seeing that it's useful. I mean, we, we're definitely seeing that those boxes will draw rats in, they'll die off, um, and then we'll sort of move them to another area. So we are seeing, and uh, we are definitely seeing some results. Um, and it's really just like Annie said, it's IPM, integrated pest management, which means we look at what's drawing them, their sources of food and water, um, and their nesting areas, and just treating those, and also using those those boxes to draw them in. So we we really try to use a multi pronged approach, um, but we've definitely seen a decrease in the areas that we've been treating and working working on. So does that answer your question? Yes, thank thank you very much, Christine. And I, I have another question, Madam Chairman. Um, Please I, go ahead. On um, line item fifty three eighty one, in uh, the actual we spent in uh, 2021 was 37,500. This is on the Arlington Youth Health and Safety Coalition. And then it's dropped to 7,500. And I'm just wondering uh, if you could just describe, um, I mean, I'm sure, that, I, I'm sure that your decisions on that spending are totally responsible, but I just would like to understand what the difference arises from. Yeah, so if you can, if you just take a look at the next line down, um, we didn't have spending um, in contracted services that that same year, but that 37,175 was the same number that we spent the following year. So we just we didn't have the the 5382. We didn't have that contracted services. So we had to pay. That was the year we we started the contract with Somerville Homeless Coalition due to the increase in the homeless population and the need to to rehouse them. So we paid out of that line. It's just a simple um, cost center that we. 
um, didn't have at the time. We just, we took it out of the Youth Health and Safety Coalition line. I believe we, um, we, uh, I, I believe we didn't have a staff person at that moment. So I think that's that had some funding in it. So we used that and then um, we were able to transfer more money in from um, another uh, division within HHS. So it was just simply um, a place to charge it to and uh, really nothing more than that. So I hope that answers that question. It does, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Jordan. Uh, thank you. Um, my question was uh, just regarding, um, again, the rodent control uh, program, and um, I was just curious about the um, the uh, the rodent box that you mentioned. So I actually work for the city of Somerville, Christine, and I recently helped procure uh, what I think are probably similar boxes. Um, is the vendor Modern Pest by chance? It is. Yes, we we yeah. actually. Uh, I, I would say that we all work together and share um, data, share the science behind these these methods. So yes, I believe it's modern pest, um, and yeah, we've we've had success. So that's really helpful to know, Jordan. Thank you. Yeah, and using them. Um, and I actually I ran into the vendor at the uh, the Mass Municipal Association um, annual trade show, and we were sort of discussing, um, you know, the new boxes um, that I believe were also being um, deployed in Arlington and. Um, I know they do a great job tracking the data, but um, I was curious about the number of boxes that we have in town and um, approximately how many um, rodents have, uh, I would say like on an average month do they capture? So we have 10 boxes. There is a cost per month for each box because it includes um, staff time coming out to, to empty them and to monitor. So we have 10 that we shift around to different sites. I want to say I, I did look at the data. I uh, like right off the top of my my head. I I can remember there being forty four rats caught in a certain period of time at one of our schools. Um, it takes it does take the rats a little bit of time to get used to the boxes and feel comfortable and in going into them. So it does take a little bit of time for them. Um, I we do have a report that I'm happy to share. Um, but I don't remember like the details of every site that we we use them at, but they're but we found them to be success, you know, helpful um, because you know doing the dry ice they'll die underground and we really just don't know the magnitude of the problem. So um, you know we we find this to be a little bit more um, useful in data collection. But we do have a, a spell report, and I'm happy to share that. Yeah, I would just I would be curious. I know they are very effective, and I think the way you're utilizing them is great. Um, I know Somerville has done approximately a thousand in a year, so um, I'd yeah. just be curious to know what Arlington was. But thank you for the explanation, Jennifer. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering um, about the vacant position um, and whether that's been filled yet. The prevention services manager, and then also the um, question of care being both the previous and the current person, a public health nurse. Oh, Kerr. Okay. Um, Kerr. Yes. So I'll start with the prevention services manager. That's currently being um, advertised. We're looking, if anybody knows anyone, just send them our way. Um, we're looking to fill that. Um, hopefully we'll be doing interviews soon. Um, Kerr left and we were able to steal her back. So she's back. Je uh, Jessica Kerr, our public health nurse. Um, yeah, that's great news. Yeah, thank you. It's one of the most difficult positions in public health across the state to fill at the moment. So we were lucky to steal her back. Great, thanks. Go for it. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, what exactly is a prevention services manager? Great question. Do you want me to answer that, Christine? Please. Um, I did send the job description to Annie LaCourt um, and it is posted on the town website, but basically this position will manage um, the opioid funding that's coming in. Um, we, in order to receive that, that funding that's coming in, the attorney general's office um, had a settlement with um, the major drug uh, companies. In order to use that funding, we have, there's a, there's a, a number of steps that we have to take um, to, spend that, we have to do a lot of reporting. Um, so doing a lot of data collection and um, allocating that funding to programs specific to um, preventing 
uh, overdoses and deaths and um, dealing with trauma related to the overdoses and deaths that we've had um, and that we expect uh, down the line. And also just looking at our um, data around mental health and developing programs and applying for grants. I think that's that's kind of our hope is that this person will be able to um, continue to seek out um, funds, alternative sources of funding. We're also part of a collaboration with Somerville, Cambridge, Everett, and Lexington, I believe. And we receive some grant funding and we're required to do some duties related to that work as well. This is a position that we had previously and we adjusted it to really fit what the needs were moving forward, sort of like the 21st century um, needs of um, prevention. Um, Can I just jump in? How much are we expecting in opioid funding? So it's a 16 year pot of funding that's coming to the town and um, it's probably, I believe it's, I literally just got an email. There's a new settlement that's coming in. So it's close to about 800,000 over the 16 years. It's all really all over the place as far as like one year we'll get 40,000, one year we'll get 12,000. So it's, it's really, um, it's all over the place, the numbers, but you will see in um, the warrant a request for us to actually start accessing that funding. And we have currently 148,000 in the um, in the fund that's come in. We are required to use that funding in a certain way. There are nine areas that we're, we're required to use that funding to support. Um, and those are outlined by the Attorney General's office and the state's Department of Public Health as well. Sophie, you have your hand up. Um, can I just jump in here really quick, Chris, Sophie, before you answer that question, just to say that the job description that Christine sent me is posted in SharePoint in the this year's Health and Human Services budget folder. Thank you. Okay, thank Sophie? you. Sophie? Yes, thank you. I was uh, wanting to go back and ask a question regarding um, the her, the public health nurse. So when she came back, um, her grade increased by two. And I'm curious um, as to, are you seeing this across all hiring positions of, of changes leaving and coming back um, and having to offer, I'm assuming negotiating a higher grade level? Yeah, so um, public health nurses are very uh, difficult to find. So that was one that was advertised for quite some time. Um, and we had to re we had to regrade that that job, and we did. And um, we spent a lot of time um, calling Jessica and uh, you know checking with her to see if she was interested in coming back. And and with the new pay and some other um, arrangements, we were able to bring her back. Um, she, we are proud to say that she was at Harvard, which you know is a great employer. But we were we were able to to um, to really um, give her um, the the job that that she loved doing um, for the amount of money that she wanted. Nurses are very, very difficult to find. COVID did not help um, an already scarce market. Um, and so, you know, it, it was, this is something I think for public health nurses in particular, you'll, you could go on the, the state's website to look at jobs for um, public health and it's uh, every town's looking for a nurse at the moment. So it's very difficult. Any other questions anyone has on this budget? Uh, Christine, what pressure, if any, do we put on um, businesses and restaurant owners and other businesses, not just restaurant owners, to um, address the rodent problem? So they are required to have uh, a pest control plan. We really push the IPM. Um, plan, you know, when the inspectors go out and look at establishments, they're looking to see how their trash is kept. Um, when we get an, a complaint in a neighborhood, we're looking to see what sources of food are potentially within the vicinity. And if it's a restaurant, we will then um, work with the restaurant to make sure it's addressed. Um, but they are definitely held held accountable for any issues that they that they may cause. Uh, you know, it, it is, it, we're in a urban suburban community and we will forever have a rodent problem, but um, it's just a matter of making sure we do the best we can to, to not have as much available sources of food and um, places for them to harbor, you know, harbor areas. Thank 
you. Okay. Any other questions on this budget? Uh, Amy, I'll leave it to you. Should we take a vote on this budget or do you want to go on, keep going? I guess I'd like to keep going and then we can decide whether it's one voter on the whole HHS or we're going to do it department by department after folks have got all the facts in hand. Does that sound good? I, I think that sounds good because it might be more efficient when, you know, for Christine herself. Yes. Be able to, to have her address all the questions and then we can take our uh, roll call vote or votes uh, when it's over, when, when she's finished giving, getting us the information we need. Great. Okay. So veterans, um, as you can see, veterans is uh, level funded. Um, we really have only one employee, which is our veteran services um, director. And um, let me just talk you through a few highlights. Um, I want to remind everybody there's a relationship between this money and um, one of our cherry sheet items. Um, we get about 75% reimbursement for services provided to veterans um, under Chapter 115, um, which is me just saying words that I don't understand the meaning of, but I'm sure Christine can answer questions about it. Um, we're providing, uh, there are conditions under which we get 100% support from the state, things like emergency housing or disaster support. Um, and we, uh, last year we received $147,000 on the cherry sheet. I don't believe we have the cherry sheet numbers for this year yet. Um, those cherry sheet numbers are generally related to how many veterans we are serving. Um, and we are currently serving, if I've got your numbers correctly, Christine, 22 veterans and their dependent dependents uh, with Chapter 115 aid. Um, but that number fluctuates as people move in and out of town during the year. And the director is also supporting roughly 100 new veterans that are filing Veterans Administration funding support each year. Um, and that funding allows our veterans to receive funding owed to them, including to pay rent, taxes, medical care, et cetera. Um, uh, I believe Topher had asked about signs, the signs budget, the signs line item in the expense budget here. Yeah, this $5,000, um, that is going to um, pay for the preservation and restoration of military markers and signs through the town. Um, we recently restored the sign at the entrance to the old burying grounds at um, uh, minimal expense to the town. And, um, you know, personally, I think um, it's money well spent. Um, so that's about everything on this budget. Um, if folks have questions. All right, anyone have any questions on the veteran services budget? All right, um, do you have another one, Annie? Yep, we'll just keep going. Uh, Council on Aging. Okay. So the highlights here are um, that our salary costs are up about $31,000. Um, this uh, budget is also offset by state money. The town is reimbursed um, based on the number of uh, residents over the age of 60. And I believe we currently have 12,069 residents over 60. And we are receiving 12, is it $12 a year, Chris? Per $12 per person per year, yeah. Per person per year. And that is the offset that you're seeing here. Um, and again, we're seeing that $60,000 $60, reduction in rent. Um, so our expenses are up about 10%. And the total budget increase is actually about 5% if you add it all up. Um, and then you can see this is how we are staffed. And I don't believe any of these positions are new, but the uh, Executive Office of Elder Affairs, that $12 per head, is covering um, on close to two of those positions. Anyone have any questions? on this budget. Anyone, any questions? Charlie. 
Thank you. Uh, Annie, can you say again, what is the uh, change in the budget if we take that 100, if we take the uh, rental buildings out, 60,000? Um, I calculated the total change in the bu budget as approximately 5%, 5% up. Thank you. But I mean, you can see that we have a, I didn't, I don't know if I did that on the taxation total or the appropriation total. I think I did it on the taxation total. I can I'm happy to answer that if if that's helpful, Annie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, had so we had a we had a receptionist that was working, I believe, 31 hours per week. Um, she unfortunately passed away. And at that time we we decided we would hire someone at the full 35. So that that increase you'll see is covered through the offset um, so that there was that increase, but it is covered. We, any of the hours, additional hours were covered outside the, the fund. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. So let's talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Okay, a um, little bit change in the focus of staffing here. Um, I don't remember exactly what the positions were last year, but one of them was administrative support for the director. And we have changed that um, position to an ADA board. Am I correct, Chris, that this is new yes. this year? Uh, we, in 23, yes. 23, yeah. So we, we, changed the focus of that position to become an Americans with Disability Act um, coordinator. And that is uh, based on demand for uh, assistance for our differently abled uh, residents. This is a person who staffs and works with the Disability Commission and also seeks funds um, to uh, uh, help us continue the transition to um, all of our streets, sidewalks, facilities, et cetera, et cetera, to be ADA compliant. Um, so that's one of the two positions in this. Uh, the other position, the community outreach coordinator is covered by ARPA funds at the moment. And this was a position to work with us on the equity audit and then to help us develop um, outreach programming uh, for those community members who are feeling disconnected from the community. Um, uh, I'm going to let Chris make a two-minute speech here about all of this because she understands it way better than I do. Um, but really, we've just kind of changed the focus of how we're staffing this department. Chris, you want to say a few words about that? Sure. So um, this has been a division since uh, 2019, and um, it was primarily Jill Harvey, uh, and then we had an admin. Um, we decided to, when the admin left the role, we decided to bring on the ADA coordinator, as Annie mentioned, that's Tim Ross. Um, he's been able to leverage his position to access a lot of state funds um, through grant writing for a number of departments. So he's very helpful in um, sort of coordinating ADA across the town. So whether it's the rec department, engineering, DPW, um, the town manager's officer are a number of departments and the library as well. So he's been able to help departments with um, improving the space, our town spaces. Um, I do think we, uh, we acknowledge that although this was an increase from the original position, this position will be um, adequately covered by the amount of funding that we're now leveraging um, from the state and the feds. So um, that's been helpful. Um, the outreach and engagement, it, community outreach and engagement coordinator, um, we embarked on a year long uh, community equity audit. Some of you may have participated in that, that was made public on Friday and was accepted by the select board on Monday. Um, you also may remember that the select board um, as one of their core values um, is equity within our community. So we embarked on this year long equity audit. Um, Teresa Marzilli has been um, working closely with the other two in the department to work to make sure that that equity audit was running as smoothly as possible. And then the goal is to take that audit, 
um, the information, the, the findings and the recommendations from that audit, develop a strategic plan, which will allow us to es essentially develop a roadmap for the next few years in how we're going to move um, the equity audit with, I mean, the equity needle within our community to make sure all members of our community feel included and in, um, the sense of belonging. Um, I think what I can say is that our um, ARPA funds have been um, used to pay for the audit, to pay for um, the, tr the community outreach coordinator. Um, it's been an invaluable, I mean, it's been such a valuable source of funding for this division. Um, without that funding, we wouldn't have been able to obviously do this work. Um, we've also done a lot of um, work with uh, one of our, our actual gen general fund lines, our consulting line, we did um, an all town employee equity training. Um, it was a 21 session training, five different workshops where we brought every town employee together um, to basically um, learn about the history of um, equity within, uh, within Arlington and also to um, understand how to um, become a more equitable uh, workforce and, and making sure that we're serving our community um, in, in the best way. And I think that that was, um, that that's, those series of uh, workshops just ended. Um, we did them from November through January um, and they were um, very successful. So um, there is definitely a lot going on in this division. Um, there was a recently a, a Lunar New Year event last week. I think what we're seeing is just, there are a lot of individuals within our community that may have felt um, on the outskirts of our community and now are feeling with this outreach, with this, these, these events and activities um, that they're you know, feeling more included. And I think that's, that's, that becomes a, um, a benefit to our community as well as people that are potentially move, thinking of moving here. I think that's something that we're, we're hearing is um, you know, people are, are interested in communities that, that have um, a sense of belonging um, for, for people of all different backgrounds. So um, that's my more than two minutes spiel. Sorry, Annie. No, that's fine. Um, uh, and Chris, the 36,000 that we're going to spend in the upcoming budget is to extend that work with our employees, correct? A portion of it will be used for that. Yes, we do okay. anticipate that. Yeah. And remind me what the rest you did tell give me the details, but I'm not staring at my notes at the moment. Um, so a portion of it is to extend our uh, work with the employees and the rest of it is going to go to community outreach. It's yes. I mean, I think what we found is that our our budget's pretty slim as far as office supplies and you know other other air you know other needs within this budget. So we may only put maybe thirty thousand towards the um, town employee trainings next year, so that we would have a portion to use for the other needs within the division. Because we are sort of borrowing right now. We're borrowing from. Um, a revolving fund that the health department has to pay for some of these these programs. So, got it. Um, yeah, I was one of the stakeholders on the equity audit, and um, in the findings, there were some things, and even just in our discussions as with the, the folks running the audit, there were some things that kind of startled me that uh, kind of made me realize I take certain things around this town for granted that um, are not necessarily things that can be taken for granted for, by other people. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the work we're going to do to um, make for a more cohesive community. Um, let me just see if I had anything else I wanted to note about this. Uh, I don't think so. Um, Does anyone have any questions on the DEI budget? Topher. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, so I, I did read the adequate audit. Um, how much did we pay the consulting firm that was engaged? Opportunity. Opportunity consulting. It was a hundred thousand um, dollar year long um, expense. All right. Thank you. Charlie. Okay. So um, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit at a disadvantage here because I was searching for the equity audit and I couldn't find it on the website. So it's posted uh, in our SharePoint in our budget folder, Charlie. If you go to oh, it's, it's in our folder. Okay. Yeah, it's in our folder. If you go to documents, FY24, 24 budgets, health and human services, I posted the pieces of the equity audit there. Okay. 
So um, absent that information, uh, I am uh, concerned that this department has grown from one person to now getting getting up to spending uh, you know close to a quarter million dollars a year. And you know my my question is, what what are our objectives? What are the metrics that we are um, measuring this spending by? Um, for example, you mentioned that uh, Christine, you mentioned that um, uh, the the new uh, ADA coordinator is applying for grants. Have we gotten any grants? And where does that income show up? I mean, I, I, from a from a um, financial viewpoint, this seems to be a significant amount of money that we're spending. And the, at least from my viewpoint today, without having read the equity audit, I think the benefits are soft. I don't know. I don't understand what, for example, what benefits have we gotten out of training all the town employees for five courses, you know, I, things like that. How do we how do we measure the efficacy of this funding? Okay, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, the the equity audit outlines um, ten findings and twelve recommendations. We will be taking those and developing a strategic plan, which we will then use um, to measure success. So we'll develop goals, and then we'll be working to to meet those goals. Um, the, some are some are soft, some are hard. So I think um, there's a there's a lot of work that we need to do between now and then. But um, I I can honestly say that um, you know I think from that first slide that Annie showed you, you you you. And because you've known me for so long, Charlie, you know that we take our dollars in HHS and we leverage other dollars. We, we are always looking for additional grants. We haven't received because they were due in November, but we haven't received the grants that were submitted by our ADA coordinator, but we are always looking for additional funds. Um, by having an equity audit, that will make it, and by having a strategic plan and, and areas that we can improve upon, that will allow us to become eligible for other additional grants and foundation funding. Um, so I think um, as with every part of what we do in HHS, we're always looking for ways to do more with less, right? Like we're always looking at ways to um, join in a collaborative to get more money or, or, or sort of join in and, and grab as much funding as we can. And, and, and there's no difference in this division. I think that it's still in its infancy. So it may look like a big amount of money, which is a portion of it, don't forget is ARPA funded. Um, but we do anticipate the, um, the ADA coordinator and then the director applying for funding to pay for programming moving forward. Um, there, there will be, there is, and there will be additional state resources coming out for DEI across the state. So I, I, I think that we'll start seeing more and more opportunity for outside funding. Um, does that help to answer? Well, first of all, um, let me say that unequivocally, I believe that your department has been uh, absolutely miraculously successful in generating additional funds over the years. I mean, I've said that many times and I fully endorse your record mm -hmm. there. But I, I um, this is to me, this uh, DEI effort, you know, if I throw the, the $100,000 for the consultant in there, the, you know, the ARPA money, et cetera, we're talking about a fairly significant amount of money. And I have a hard time getting my arms around what the benefits are going to be and how many people will be benefited and to what degree um and you know maybe i'll maybe i'll find that out when i when i read the equity audit i'm sorry i didn't do i was looking for it i couldn't find it and i didn't realize that it was already in the fincom sharepoint but um this i i just think this is serious money i think we're facing a, a you know override pressure coming up and um we need to consider where we're spending the money that's just my 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 view. But thank you very much for the answer. Thank you. I'll, um, following up on that, I'll just point out that we just looked at the veterans benefit, the veteran services budget, which is actually granted they need to get funding to offset that, but that budget itself is larger than this budget. And one could argue, if you want to play devil's advocate, this budget 
DEI actually serves all of the town rather than simply benef uh, veterans and their dependents. Um, but I, I, I think uh, Charlie's right that we should be looking at this budget and all budgets with a, a sharp eye. Um, Jordan, you have your hand up. Yeah, and Christine, I think um, this sort of uh, going off of your last statement, I think that this probably builds on it. But um, uh, my question was just, uh, you know, you've uh, Christine, you've explained a lot of the roles um, in the projects that um, the DEI department has uh, been working on, whether that's making um, making transit um, options more accessible. Um, you talked about um, the work that the community outreach coordinator has done. And, um, you know, I know from being in Somerville that trying to do things like public equity audits, you know, they are quite the undertaking and they're quite time consuming. Um, uh, and they take a lot of effort and a lot of cross uh, department efforts to be able to really get an accurate um, uh, representation. Um, but I was I was curious what else, uh, what other kind of work um, the DEI office um, is currently involved in, um, both within the uh, the town offices and with the community as a whole, um, and uh, what the what that currently looks like and um, what it might look like for the future. So um, at a minimum, the, the three staff are a work directly with three of our commissions, the Rainbow Commission, Human Rights Commission, and the Disability Commission. And they coordinate all of the events and programming that come out of those commissions as well. So the Human Rights Commission, for example, has a calendar of events and a calendar of activities. So, you know, um, we're in Black History Month, so we've got banners all up and down Mass Ave. Um, there's an art project, there's the Black Joy project, um, there's going to be a Juneteenth project. Um, you know, I think every month there's a program that the division is running. So in, in the Lunar New Year event that was um, at Town Hall last week, I think that these events are, are, have always been going on and will just continue. And I think that the richness will, you will see, you will see the um, impact of these positions on those events because they will become more and more part of our community. Um, the Disability Commission, I think, um, you know, it's a, a required position within any city or town across the country. You know, you have to have an ADA coordinator um, and that, that person works directly with our commission, will receive, um, requests from community members, complaints from community members, and we'll have to follow up. So there's a lot of work in that area as well. And then the Rainbow Commission is the same. I mean, it, it's often um, you, the staff are, are doing a lot of the work of the commission to run events and to respond to complaints. A lot of residents will bring complaints forward um, and the staff are working to, to support the residents that are, are complaining. You know, a lot of um, police reports are sent to the department um, and there's follow up that needs to be done um, and the staff are following up um, with the police and with the victim to um, sort of work out a, a resolution as well. <clears throat> Any other yeah, questions, Jordan? Uh, no, thank you for that explanation. I think, um, you know, that's uh, it's a lot of work that I think um, that that it's involved with being accountable with three different dis, uh, three different committees and also having the role that you just described as uh, working both with police and with the public to try to address some of the issues that come in. So uh, thank you for that explanation. Sophie, you're up. Uh, yes, thank you. So um, maybe going back a bit to what Charlie was saying, um, it, I think this affects all of our budgets this year. Um, and I know in the ones I'm working on, um, we're waiting for some answers from the town manager's office to explain some, uh, a lot of raises happening sort of across the board to bring non-union um, personnel up to sort of the union level of pay. But uh, this particular budget, I think um, is more than that. Can, these increases in pay, if I'm calculating right, sometimes are in the, percent increase is that can you explain that a bit do you, Andy did you want to explain that or did you want me to I'm I'm happy to take a shot at you know part of what I think is going on here um uh so the 
community outreach coordinator's position is totally new, I believe. I don't believe that was in the budget last year. We had a different position. Um, no, we had it in 23. Had it in 23? Yeah. Um, but we didn't, did we hire it? We hired it in 23. We did. So I can, I'm happy to jump in. <laughs> So those two positions were um, were put into the, the plan last year, um, but weren't hired until the summer, until we received the funds. But they were they were um, eventually graded and people were hired into those positions at a different rate. So they may have, you know, we may have thought, OK, we'll put 50,000 into the budget as a placeholder. But then HR graded the position at a little higher. So you may, that may be part of it. Um, and also I think we thought, oh, we could hire the person at 0.8 and then we ended up hiring them at 1.0. Um, and so that's a little bit of the, the issue. And then because they're brand new, they come in at a, at a low um, step and then they're eligible for steps each year. Um, so there's no, you know, other than um, the guess on the amount of money that we would be putting in last year, um, there was really no major like, salary increase for each person it's it's it was just that um they were brought in at the rate that it says new pay that's really kind of around where they were brought in at and then they're eligible for the step right so so last year what we had was placeholder dollars yes and not a real salary somebody was making and then when we hired those positions as you can see we always have a range and so and that's based on sort of grades and steps and where we think they're going to fall. And they were hired at a higher rate than uh, we had originally budgeted for. So this is not necessarily a big increase this year over last year's salary. Um, I believe the only big jump is um, the directors. And Chris, wasn't that a, also a title and step and grade bump? Uh, I think she was reclassified, um, but that was, I believe that was two years ago. I don't, okay. I don't believe it was this year, right. in 23. I don't believe it was 23. There is a, again, a big jump. Of course, this is a budget book jump. So she may have been salaried higher than this last year. Right. And this would not be such a huge jump over um, what she was actually earning. I do know there was a title and concomitant regrading at some point recently. Sophia, does that answer your question? Uh, yes, I, I see there's a, a two-step increase from last year's budget to this year's budget for that director position. So that must be that. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm always curious about reserve funds. So just wanted to ask about, is a reserve fund you mentioned a specific reserve fund or is it a reserve fund for all of HSS or and about how much is in it and what are, where is it coming from? Reserve fund? So it was a revolving fund I mentioned. Revolving fund, I'm sorry. Um, yes. So that fund is the Board of Health revolving fund. You'll see it in the um, annual town meeting it might be in the select board packet. Um, I'm not, I don't believe it's in the FinCom um, packet, but we have currently, it's usually about 200,000 in there. Um, we are allowed to spend up to 150. Um, there are different lines within there. We use that to bring in money from um, uh, insurance reimbursements for vaccinations, flu, whatever it is, now it's COVID. Um, but then we use that that revolving fund to purchase the vaccine. So it's in to purchase time, a nurse time, if we have to pay nurses. Um, we do have like a line in there that's like general um, office supplies that we were able to use. So um, we that's the fund that I referred to, Jennifer, when I said we used right. a portion of our, we borrowed Right, money. right. I was just wondering, yes. Okay. Okay. It's and the Board of Health revolving. BOH revolving is what you'll find it under. Okay, great. Thanks. That helped answer this question. Yeah. Charlie? Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. I just wanted to, I think I have an answer to the question about the jump in salary. Um, I believe it was last year that we created this department. There was a position previously, and then we, we created uh, a department. So the, uh, the lead um, staffer there became a department manager as opposed to uh, the staff position that she had originally. Yes.
Any other questions? Uh, I, I have one. Um, we have, this is not, we have had previously someone who has been at least acting as the ADA coordinator, correct, for some years. Arlington has had somebody in that position doing that work. So um, could you remind me who that was and, and why we now, it looks like we have um, a different person doing this for more money. Yes, so the other person that was in the role was a grant funded position that fell in weatherization, which um, was just a, it was a person who didn't receive any funding from the town for this role, um, but did it uh, through their grant funded role um, for the town. Um, it was a Department of Community Development position uh, grant the program is now gone and the person had retired. Um, and then once we brought on the DEI coordinator, Jill Harvey, she became the ADA coordinator. Um, but what we learned is there's that there's just too much um, ADA work to do um, that we needed a full-time, you know, we needed a person specifically to do that in addition to all the other work that needed to be done. Okay, thank you. Anything else on this budget? Uh, do you have another budget, Annie? Um, oh, wait, fine. Charlie, do you have a question? Charlie, you're muted. Still you're muted. Still, you're still muted. How am I now? I think I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. So um, is, is the uh, syllabus or the, the text or manuals or whatever that we use for the um, training course for the town staff available? We are getting a whole packet, like a booklet from them, I think this week. I'm happy to share that whenever we do get that. That would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the only thing I have left to do is the, I'm just going to float around here a little bit, the uh, Council on Aging Transportation um, Enterprise Fund. And I just want to check and see what my notes were on this. Yeah, so um, we are down in salary here because we had a position that is CDBG funded that we showed in the budget last year, but that we are not showing in the budget this year. I think this is just another accounting decision. So um, uh, that's not, I wouldn't call it a savings, I guess is where I'm headed with that. Um, and then most of the employment here is a van driver and some on-call van drivers. Um, and the training budget is really required training for um, the van driver um, to retain that position. It's certification or something, Christine? Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. CPR and other driving requirements. Yeah, and then the you know obviously auto gas and oil for the van and expenses related to the van, and then we have expenses related to providing taxi uh, receipts or or vouchers for folks who need transportation that you know under circumstances where the van does not work out. Um, and then you can see that as sort of you know um, uh, lines of income, we get some fees in, we have some CDBG funding. I um, guess we don't have any gifts and donations this year. We have transfer from retained earnings. Um, Summer, Chris, you noted for me what the balance in retained earnings is. It's not very much, as I recall. And, um, and then we transfer $50,000 in from the general fund um, to help cover some of those transportation costs. Um, so 
uh, total expenditures, total uh, revenue, 127,549. Um, Chris, do you have any idea how many rides we provided? Any of the stats that go with this off the top of your head? Or I forgot. Oh that. gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll have to get that to you. That, oh, that's the number I'm not I'm not up on at the moment because there are different rides. There are all different types of rides. We do Uber too. That's under the taxi expense. So there's a bunch of different types of rides all over. Got it. I can get you that. Okay, questions? All right, Al Tosti. Yeah, uh, I'm looking at the revenues to support this, and this almost should not be an enterprise fund. We're basically spending 127,000 in expenses, and we're bringing in 13,000 in revenue. Everything else is from the, from the taxpayer, the uh, community development block grant, uh, the uh, 34,000, 35,000, from retained earnings and fifty thousand from the general fund, you know what? Why why shouldn't this just be a budget? Is that a rhetorical question, or no? Is there something the finance committee can do to simply say dissolve the fund and roll it into the budget? I guess I guess uh, I'm just asking a question. It doesn't itself. It, it, it brings in very little revenue, mm -hmm. less than 10%. It is more of a policy question than anything else. It's a budget that brings in less than 10% of its expenses in its own revenue. Everybody else brings in almost all of their revenue. Well, all the other enterprise funds. All the other enterprise funds mm -hmm. pretty much pay for themselves with one or two minor exceptions. This one... Right. If we didn't transfer all that money, uh, they don't even bring in 10% of their budget. So I, I, so, so I guess what I'm, what I'm asking policy you, question. right, but whose policy? Well, Our I guess let, or, let, uh, Al Tosti is making a, a, a very good point. And since we have her with us, um, Christine, do you have any thoughts on, on that? Does it make any difference whether this is just a plain budget or whether this is, is a, an enterprise fund or not? Do you want, here's an opportunity to, to wade in on, on, on that, uh, this issue. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a conversation that comes up quite often. I think we're one of the only in the state that has an enterprise fund for the transport the senior transportation vans. Um, so I think it would make sense to, you know, think about that. There is a new, um, our comptroller has said no more gifts and donations or grants can run in through that line. So that's why you'll see um, no more money coming in. We don't, we don't put any of our grants or donations in here. We run it all outside of um, this fund. So it really, it re the, having it as an enterprise fund, it really limits what we can do. Um, as far as you know, running um, running the monies through here. So um, if we're evolving fund, it might be different. I I I think I would love to just maybe chat with our um, comptroller to see what what she thinks would make sense. Look at what other cities and towns are doing. Um, but it, it would make sense to maybe not be an enterprise fund moving forward. Right, but that's. I mean, Chris, the reason I'm asking the question about whose policy decision it is, is that I don't know whether it's our policy decision or it's the town manager's policy decision or it's the select boards. So right. I'm sort of hoping maybe Al or Charlie knew how you move a revolving fund from being, or a, a enterprise fund from being an enterprise fund to being a budget instead. Well, I'm, I'm not necessarily saying that we're gonna do something this year. We've got a right. new director coming in We've got a new town manager coming in. Uh -huh. And so I'm just raising the issue among us and with Christine that maybe there's a better way of doing this um, for next year. Yeah. So maybe I, I'm not making a motion to no, I, I understood that. I guess what I'm wondering is whether there's a next action step we ought to put on a list somewhere for us to take as those new people are on board to raise this question. Yeah. So well, I think um, Christine already talked about her maybe having a discussion with the controller. 
Um, and it is something that the Finance Committee could follow up with um, as we finish out this budget season uh, and we prepare for the, the next one. I think uh, that's a good point. Um, and if there's, if there's no benefit to um, doing it this way, then we should think about the alternative. Charlie, you have a hand up. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, so I, I thoroughly uh, support Al's question in general, but I'm looking at the, at the uh, uh, revenues. And <clears throat> so if we're pulling $34,349 in from retained earnings, it, it, and, and bringing in 50,000 from the town in order to balance the funds. It seems to me that we have no more retained earnings. So if the service level is gonna stay the same next year, that means we have, to, we have to support it at the rate of close to 85,000 from the town funds as opposed to 50,000. That's just the, my, you know, unless, unless we get more money from CDBG or something like that. Um, but in any event, the, uh, as Al said, the the idea of a, an enterprise fund here is, is somewhat thin. Um, and to answer Anne's question, Andy's question about how do you end an enterprise fund is uh, as long as there's um, you know, no liability, you just don't put money into it and you spend the money on the services out of the general budget. That's, that's just a, just let it go to, just let it go to zero. Hi, you call me? Okay. Um, so I'll just, so Charlie's right, we can stop spending it. The other way to do it for the division of local services is um, after three, after at least three years, a legislative body, I'm assuming that's town meeting, subject to the local charter, yeah, absolutely it is, may terminate the enterprise fund. So if Tom Meeting wanted to kill an enterprise fund, they can do it. So it sounds like it's Christine internal discussion and then possibly a article on the warrant next spring. Yeah, and I, I, I think the challenge is it doesn't um it doesn't meet, I mean, the, you know, Al, Al's right, it, it doesn't meet the criteria for an enterprise fund. Right, so um, I mean, I'm looking at the DLS bulletin and matches everything I've ever known about them. And they're supposed to be these um, proprietary type enterprises with, within the government, right? So people always point out like water departments, electric departments. Um, I think they use motor pools a lot. Um, we don't have motor pools, but they use that a lot as examples. Um, it's like Christine said, it's not supposed to be a council on aging. Uh, transportation budget. So it, it's not there anymore to meet the standard. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, not seeing anything further. Um, Annie, do you have another budget? We wanted to um, go ahead and let Rebecca do AYCC. We could then let Chris go and have our discussion and then vote the budgets in whatever order we wanted to. So I'm going to stop sharing and let Rebecca take the hot seat for a little while. Take it away, Rebecca. Thank you. All right, let me just get my screen up on here. Great. Um, so, so AYCC is an enterprise fund much more in the you know traditional expectation sense of an enterprise fund. So if we look at the budget here, um, we see a lot of money coming in and a lot of money going out and increasing every year, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, but the bottom line for the town and the taxpayers uh, is this transfer from other funds, which you can see is steady at $120,000. Um, but to go over some of the, some of the items here, um, uh, by far the largest expense is the salaries and wages for the AYCC. Um, <clears throat> there are two new positions this year of mental health clinicians who are full-time and one new budgeted 
part-time psychiatrist, which hasn't been filled yet is my understanding. Um, if you look at the salaries expenses over time, you know, they're definitely going up quickly. I, I will point out for those of us who are new uh, this year on to town meeting, um, the increase from 2021 to 2022 in actual is not as large as it looks because you also see this line item fee for service clinicians uh, drop and disappear. So a decision had been made to put these clinicians into the regular staff. Um, nevertheless, there are increases, you know, significant increases every year because of the fact that people are being hired. Um, the, the major source of revenue for AYCC you see here is this 820,000, which is expected from insurance reimbursement. So this is just insurance held by the, you know, the children's families, um, which AYCC can, can bill. And the other part of that is 85,000, which are budgeted as youth services client fees. This is money that the families would pay themselves as co-pays or deductibles or co-insurance that, you know, that's set by their insurance. Um, there's also a, an amount of $175,000 from the state. This $40,000 that you hear comes from the schools for services that are provided in the school buildings. Uh, a little bit of money, 15,000 from CDBG. And let's see, $100,000 from ARPA. But again, uh, the, to emphasize the amount from the town, the taxpayer total is $120,000, which is flat. Um, there were a couple of things that were noted in the meeting that we had with Christine and with the director of AYCC. Um, one thing that's being seen across the country, of course, is that the demand for services, counseling services for young people has just shot up. They've seen an increase of 200% since January of 2020 in the demand for their services. So they really are looking for opportunities to expand what they can offer. Um, right now they're using essentially all the space they have available to them at the Whittemore Robbins house. Um, so it, while it's not relevant to this budget, you, you'll see when we start talking about capital that they're interested in moving forward on plans to renovate the cottage house there to give them some additional counseling space. And they're using some Zoom appointments to <clears throat> help them meet some of the increased demand. Um, another thing that, that's not shown in this document, but is important for people to have on their radar is that they were just granted uh, a 10 year grant of $50,000 a year from the Cummings Foundation. Um, and the intention with that is that that will go towards some of the insurance expenses for the staff of AYCC. And I believe that's what I have, if there are questions. Charlie, your hand is up. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, this is not a question. This is just a, an observation or a comment, especially for some of the, the newer members on the committee. If my memory serves me right, about 10 years ago, maybe 11 years ago, this uh, activity was about to be shut down by, the, by a, a prior town manager because it was bleeding profusely cash and there was nothing coming in. And to Christine's great credit, um, she basically turned this into a business, uh, you know, providing services, collecting money from the state, from insurance companies, uh, from other organizations. And, and that's the reason why that $120,000 contribution to the town has maintained flat. So I, I think this, the part, this particular part of the department is a, uh, or this particular activity is a huge feather in the cap for um, the Health and Human Services Department. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I agree completely. Thank you. Uh, El Tosti. Uh, two questions. One is, and this would be both for the uh, uh, Council on Aging and Transportation and AYCC. Do you have the fiscal 22 fund balances for each of those? I have for AYCC, I, I have only $12,800 in retained earnings. Um, does someone else have the Council on Aging handy? The Council on Aging return, uh, retained was about 38. 
Okay, and, and my second question is, uh, will we be using some of the op opioid settlement money here? It would seem like a natural fit. That is definitely um, going to be part of the conversation in order to start using that funding. We need to have a community outreach meeting um, and then do a strategic plan and start um, planning to use the funds. But yes, there is a piece within the state legislation that allows us to use it for um, some trauma response for um, maybe children that have witnessed a, a death or overdose. So we will certainly be looking at that. Okay, thank you. Shane. Um, thanks uh, everyone. Um, question, how, how do we define youth? Is it high school or what age? And then just curious, like on an annual basis, you know, how many youth are we serving? how much sort of we have a high demand like nationwide is sort of how much of the demand you know how much are we able to meet here or how many people do we have to unfortunately turn away for services uh well we don't turn anyone away yeah. um okay. but we there may be a wait um we're always okay. looking to decrease that weights um at any given moment there are about 200 people in and out of the um the agency for services um, but we may see somebody for three months and then they go off and then um, new clients come in and out. So it could be up to three, um, 300 uh, per year. And then there's also work going on in the school. So that's a different number. I'll, I, I unfortunately didn't bring my numbers, but, or I, maybe I do have it. I just yeah. I have to really dig through to pull that. So I will want to get you that, that those numbers specifically. I can send that to Annie. Shane, Shane, to the first part of your question, yeah, I believe yeah. it's correct that they serve um, ages three to 21. Is that correct, Christine? It is. And then there are families. Um, so there may be some family counseling, parents, support groups. Um, we also do domestic violence support. And then we have, as you can see in the budget, there's a position um, that's shared with the police department. Uh, it's listed as Lazar, uh, Lazar, and then the former person was Opara. It's the case management homeless outreach. That person's doing work with residents up to age 59 that are in need of housing services, mass health, um, SNAP benefits, any other um, services to keep them, um, you know, safe and and um, you know housed within our community, basically. So that that's the one position that's mostly all ages, up to age 59. At 60 Thank years you. of the Council on Aging. Thanks very much. Yeah. Jennifer? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, I, I, well, first I wanna say that we are very, very lucky to have this organization and not every town does. And I, I it's just a fabulous organization. Um, I noticed the very tiny gifts and donations. Is this where the gala money used to go, but we haven't had fundraising for galas? Is that? So there's a rule in the state, <laughs> DLS, um, where we're not allowed to use, we're not allowed to bring in gifts and donations into an enterprise fund. We learned this from our comptroller uh, okay. just recently. So we are running that money outside of, we're running a position in that money outside of the enterprise fund. Um, so like this budget is a little bit bigger than what you see. I see. Um, and that's sort of where we're paying for some of our um, insurance. So when we moved from FIFA service to um, town positions, the agreement was that we would pay a portion of the insurance for some of the clinicians that were eligible. Um, mm -hmm. We just got our first bill yesterday. Annie, I know we said we hadn't gotten a bill yet, but we, we got our first bill for insurance, uh, health insurance um, to pay for the town staff. Okay. Um, so. So that's yeah, what that, we're using when, when yeah, we do so fundraising during the galas or I mean we sent yeah. you sent out um cards last year I remember sort of requesting money so yeah. um so, so it's, that's going to pay the insurance costs it is and also um additional hours so it's run outside of the the fund but yes okay. it is supporting okay. the agency still okay thanks yep John um yes as someone mentioned that the uh the opioid funds may be a good match for this this area. Uh, I was just wondering, since this, it seems like these services almost pay for themselves, would would the opioid money funds actually be better used elsewhere in some of the um, <clears throat> areas that don't pay for themselves? Or do you expect actually, you know, some of the counseling services related to opioids not to be reimbursable? Just any thoughts on that? 
anything un that's not reimbursable we'll be paying for. So we we have started to through ARPA funds. We brought on board um, a recovery coach, and we've been paying for some housing for people to go to treatment. And so those are services that you know we know we'll need to continue with, but um, through the opioid money. But but here, if there's a family in crisis or in need of mental health services, we would we would run them through AYCC because it's almost impossible for a family to get to access services if they were just to call a, a facility. Yeah. It, it's the waits are just too long um, and there are usually no slots available. So we would want to run them through this agency. And if it's not reimbursable by insurance, it would be covered through here. So. Got it. So and that's maybe where I'm just going into the future a bit when it sounds like there's going to be some opioid funds available and is what you just described where maybe some of those funds would go towards. Correct. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. Yep. And, and is it fair to say that we are expecting the ARPA funds to dry up after the 2024 budget? So we have this year and last year we had 100,000, but we're not going to, we can't expect that going forward. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Any other questions? John, you have, still have your hand up. Do you have any? Charlie. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I have a, a question for uh, Christine. Um, were you able, was town able to uh, attend to the needs of the homeless in the area in the uh, cold snap last weekend? Yes, yes. Um, through our partnership with Somerville Homeless Coalition, they had a shelter that they had um, set up in Somerville. So we were able to make sure that any of the individuals that were in need of a shelter were brought there. We also had, I believe, one or two that we um, were able to put into temporary housing within Arlington. So we were able to, to cover. But our, our homeless outreach person worked um, worked that, which was great. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Um, I, Annie, this is, is this the, and Rebecca, is this the last budget we will? That's correct, yeah. Need, need Christine for? Yes, yes. All right, before we let you go, Christine, if you could just stay on for a little bit longer in case anyone just has any general questions, not specific to a particular budget, um, um, here's your chance. I, I don't know if there are any further questions left, but. Um, just wanted, uh, um, she has done great work in a lot of different departments um, and we rely very heavily on her and, and her people. Um, so here's your chance to, to ask any residual questions, anything else that's we haven't covered, anything? If I could just add, um, uh, Chris, the you can see why with this complexity in the budget i i ask um christine to come and be present when we present these budgets so for anybody who's looking for an example of why you would ask somebody to come um and back you up a department head to attend the meeting this is really the reason that i do it um i'm ambitious that at some point i will know this all well enough that i don't need her as backup but the last couple of years, that has not been the case. <laughs> well, thank you for backing me up. Well, thank you, Annie and Rebecca, for being our rep. I appreciate it. And thank all of you, too, for the work you do on the town budget. It's appreciated on my level. So thank you. Thank you for your time. And again, thanks. Thank you for all the great work that you've been doing for the town. Okay, thank you. All right. So with that, I would like to start. Um, taking some votes on the budgets that we have, have covered. Um, so the health and human, we'll start with the health and human services budget. Um, did you want a motion or did you want to try to do them together? I want to separate them in case anyone has any particular issue with any one department. Um, 
I think that would be ultimately quicker and easier to do than to get into a, to, uh, a debate oh, that right. might over all of them. Um, all right, so health and human services. Um, well, I move Rebecca, approval. Do you have a do you have a motion? I move approval on the taxation total as printed in the budget book, seven hundred and forty five thousand two hundred ninety seven dollars. Have a second. 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 All right. Any further discussion on the health and human services budget? All right, seeing no hands, I'm gonna to go to a roll call vote now. Um, so the health and human services budget. Jordan? Yes. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Annie? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. Altosti? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. Dave McKenna? Yes. All right, unanimous vote approving the Health and Human Services budget. Next is Veteran Services. So we move approval for the taxation total of $367,408. For veteran services. Second. What's that number again? Three hundred and fifty-seven thousand four hundred and eight. The veterans. 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 Am I? Yeah, I'm veterans. Be right, I'm on Council of Aging. Ah. Three twenty-seven seven fifty-three. Three twenty-seven seven fifty-three. Sorry, guys. All right. So there's a motion. To approve the veteran services budget in the amount of 327753. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Any questions? Discussion? Seeing no hands, I'll go to a roll call vote on the veteran services budget. Jordan? Yes. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Uh, yes. Sophie? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Annie? Yes. L. Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. L. Tosti? Yes. Dean? Yes. Dave? Yes. All right, the next budget, it's been uh, unanimously approved. The next budget is the DEI budget, correct? Oh, council on Aging. What I have next? Council on Aging. Council on Aging. All right, do I have a motion? I move the taxation total of $367,408 as printed in the budget book. We have a second. 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 All right. Well, any any discussion? All right. We'll go for a vote. Uh, Jordan. Yes. Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Sorry. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. Yes. John. Yes. Annie? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Al Tost, uh, Peggy? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Dean? Yes. Dave? Yes. All right. That budget, the Council on Aging budget, has been approved unanimously. Uh, next budget is the DEI budget. I move approval of the taxation total of $193,666. Second. I have a second. 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 Uh, any discussion? Um, Charlie. All right. 
Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I'm going to vote against this budget. Um, I think it has uh, grown uh, too rapidly and there's additional funds that are being spent and I'm not happy that I'm not I'm not convinced that um, that they're not going to try to creep into the budget uh, when the outside uh, funding goes away. And I think the um, the controls and the metric metrics um, in this area are just too weak. So um, I'm going to vote against this budget. I don't have a substitute motion, but I think that uh, I need to send the message that uh, this is um, not satisfactory. Thank you. Sophie. Uh, so I, I'm concerned, um, whether it's this budget or maybe others, but that we had some vacant positions that we budgeted last year, um, clearly under budgeted, and we didn't catch that they were too low for the future hires. And I'm afraid that's going to go everywhere. Do we need to worry about how we're budgeting for vacant positions? I mean, this is a 20% increase on each position. Well, other people can chime in. I don't know if the problem is that we, when we budget for vacant positions, we're budgeting low. I think the issue maybe we're hiring too high, that we're, we're filling positions with a higher salary than perhaps maybe we should, especially if it's a new, new person, new, new position. I hear Christine Bongiorno say that it's hard to fill these uh, positions and um, um, you can only hire what you can hire at. But um, I, it's been it's been the, at the urging of the finance committee that that vacant positions be um, posted and hired at at the lower range in the salary than than mid or high. So um, where as a new member. Or relatively new. Where does the money come from when they, uh, in this situation, when they hired so much higher than what was budgeted? Where did they get the money from to make these hires? The budget. From their safe, from from whatever they have they have left over, and they can they can use in their budget. That's free. Right. They, they would they would if they hire partway through the year, they'll have part of that salary to apply to a higher rate of pay. Okay, so when we and then it has to appear in the budget. I mean, um, knowing the town manager, the current town manager, and the former town manager, they would have looked at what they were able to do in those positions at the time of hiring and said, "What is? How does this affect the next five years?" and projected it forward. So, I mean, I can't tell you that's a fact, but that's. Right. So we funded it and then it stayed vacant. So money was there and they were able to apply that. They are not allowed to exceed their budget. Um, there are extraordinary circumstances under which they can exceed a budget and we will make a reserve fund transfer, but I don't think we would do that for a miscalculation of higher. We usually do that for things like retirement payouts or an extraordinary expense. Okay. Right. Speaking out of turn there, Chris. I don't mean to read, read to, to stomp on your. I, I think what you uh, are raising, Sophie, is very important and valid. And I think we should be looking at, when we look at the budgets, we should see where are these people, the new hires being put in the, in the pay scale. Um, we have been, as Finance Committee, our policy is to urge the town manager to not hire, put hire people and put them at the higher end of the pay scale. Um, and if they do, they're gonna have to figure out how to get that money. Um, Annie, you have your hand up? Yeah, I just, with regard to this issue of, of hiring in general, in particularly hiring these new positions in the current climate, um, I would urge everybody to remember that we had six or 7% inflation the last couple of years and that we are in the middle of an historic labor shortage despite the Google layoffs. Um, so, you know, hiring, so it, it, looking at this and saying, hey, we can't go over $54,000 might have meant not hiring anybody at all, which I don't think is effective. So um, I would defend those new hires uh, in that manner. 
Um, and I would also defend work of this department as probably one of the most important new initiatives the town has undertaken in the last five years. Um, this is about uh, a change in our world that I think is very important. I'm not sure there are good metrics, um, but I do think that it's a very, very important uh, level of cultural growth for us. So my two cents. John? Um, yeah, I, during the what, the presentation earlier, I think someone <clears throat> compared this to, to the Veterans Department and said, oh, the similar funding in the Veterans Department. But uh, if you look at the Veterans Department, they actually have $76,000 of salary expenses compared to uh, 220K, 220,000 here. And also in, um, in their actual, lost actuals available in 2022, were 93,000. So it is, it's jumping from 93,000 in 2022 of actuals to 220. Whereas it seems like in 2022, it was, it was a lot more in line with the salaries of the veterans. So I think the veterans is a good comparison. And I I mean, I, you know, I'm still learning about this committee, but I, I, I feel like it would be nice if, if the salaries did stay a little closer to the veterans. So um, I think Charlie makes a good point. Just wanted to say that. I just want to clarify what I meant when I was referring to the veterans budget. I was just looking at the bottom line yeah. um, and comparing it to the DEI de de department and, and making the point that um, the veteran services department serv services veterans and de their dependents were the DEI uh, department arguably services all of us um, townwide. Yep. Um, it's not, I'm, I didn't mean to make it a apples to apple comparison. I just wanted to throw that thought out in terms of uh, who this budget services, um, just to, to have people keep that in mind. Having said that, I think the points being made about the DEI budget are completely valid too. Um, Peggy? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I do have a question. She spoke about events that this um, group has put on um, Black History Month flags or Lunar New Year. And I'm curious, are those types of events new or have they always been ongoing, but are now in this new group? I, I guess I'm trying to figure out It, what I mean, I, I I understand where Charlie is coming from. How do you how do you measure DEI diversity, equity, and inclusion? But I'm also curious just about some of the tangible events, whether those have been ongoing in the town over several years, or is this something that's been newly started? Um, other people may have a better perspective than I, but I know that some of these things have happened in the past. Some of these things have have happened in the past and are are bigger now. And I think the the uh, there are some recent activities, events that have never happened before. Um, I don't know if anyone else um, well, has yeah, more information. I would like to try to answer that question. So I would, I would answer in a couple of different ways. One is that when we hired a DEI coordinator and assumed that that person was going to partly be the ADA coordinator, what we pretty rapidly figured out was that between those two functions, between trying to look at how we operate as a town internally, in other words, how our employees behave and how they interact with citizens through an equity lens, and also look at the larger community and how it functions as a community through an equity lens that what we found was that Jill Harvey's job was full-time, if not more, and that our EDA coordination had been inadequate. And I can tell you as a former member of the select board who worked with the Disabilities Commission, that they were very frustrated for a long time about their inability to get attention on their issues. And um, what they needed was internal staff time and uh, persistence in 
dealing with the challenges that people with disabilities face with the built environment and so on and so forth. So I think that both Jill Harvey's position and the ADA coordinator's position are perfectly justifiable in terms of their growth. Um, I would say that the community outreach position that's being funded by ARPA, a, you know, I agree that we can only continue to fund it if we are moving forward with um, grant funding for that position in the future. But if you read the uh, equity audit, I think you will discover why we need a position to offer those functions. I was very startled to discover that there are people, there are things that I'm connected to in town. I've lived here for 35 years. There are things that I'm connected to in town that I was able to connect to as a new resident, as a parent of young kids through the schools on and so forth, that there's a segment of our community feels very disconnected from, and we need to build those bridges to that segment of our community to make them feel engaged in a full resident of Arlington. And that's just one slice of what that equity audit is, has found and is talking about. Um, so I don't wanna wax poetic about the sort of social aspect of that, but I think it's a very important thing. So I think this department's activities are highly justified. I think what Chris was trying to do was to say, and there's all this other stuff they're doing, but um, uh, the real important work is the boosting of the ADA coordination work, this equity audit, the new community effort, and the fact that we now are actually looking at diversity, equity, and inclusion in the town of Arlington, which we were assuming and not actually examining before we added Jill Harvey's position. So I think we are justified in spending this money. Um, and I, can I ask anyone who's not speaking to mute themselves? There's some, some feedback and bad audio we're getting. Um, Alan Jones. Thank you. Uh, I did, did want to mention there are new events. Uh, for example, the Lunar New Year's event that was a couple of weeks ago was tremendous, the, the Juneteenth, and there are other things. And to some extent, if these events uh, are well received and serve a useful purpose, that's almost a metric. You know, how many productive events can we do? But I also wanted to remind people in terms of the money spent, uh, it is a zero sum game in that the manager is committed to a certain level of growth for general government three and a quarter percent so the dei department or any other an increase in the dei department isn't necessarily an increase in what taxpayers are spending that's providing less money for other departments it's a it's a shift of priorities so it's not a cost it's a shift of priorities but it's you know and it's a big policy decision that's uh that but anyway it is a zero sum game or a three and a quarter percent sum game thank you Thank you, Ellen. Uh, Charlie? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. I, I just wanted to comment that both uh, my experience on the, on the Finance Committee and both my experiences on the Finance Committee and the Capital Planning Committee, uh, I recall reaching out to the Disabilities Commission on multiple occasions and not getting a response. So the idea that, the, you know, that somehow or another the town hasn't been addressing these concerns sort of uh, boggles my mind because we have uh, been reaching out to the disability, you know, the, the community, the disability commission, which has been around for a long time and has had members that are representing uh, disabled folks. So just, it's not something new. Thank you, Charlie. Sophie? Uh, yes, so a couple points. Um... I'll start with actually what Charlie just said. So last year, um, when the Disability Commission came before the committee, I ended up um, sort of being a liaison with them. I don't know for the old members if we remember that, but um, I will say at first it seemed hard to connect with them, um, but then it became, as I learned more about them, and um, there is a requirement that I think 50% of that committee have disabilities, right? And what was explained to me is that those involved and usually chairing and, and vice chairs um, are trying to run a committee or the disability commission and deal with their own disabilities, which limit their ability to do such things. So it, it you know, I think there's some leeway that has to, you know, understanding that has to occur in how we relate with them and what we can expect from them. 
um, and the help that they need from us. And um, I, I can echo that what Annie said that absolutely last year, um, the lack of an ADA coordinator was uh, mentioned by the Disability Commission and they were looking forward to um, really needing that. And that was one of their chief complaints actually um, was not having that. And, and there was one and one had left and, and the loss of that was definitely felt within that community. Um, my concern um, it is just the, is the increase from what was posted and um, for the vacant position and how it was hired. And I, I don't know what we can do about that because we do need the ADA coordinator, but going forward, um, I hope we can impress on the town the importance of, of respecting sort of the budget and not having our hand forced for the next budget because the people are already in place. Thank you, Jennifer. Sorry, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just realized I put something in, in chat that I shouldn't have done, so I wanted to say it publicly, um, which is that I, I've I've sat in on several disability commission meetings um, from in various roles that I've had, um, and uh, there have been some problems, but there's also been a tremendous turnover. So anybody you might have talked to five years ago probably isn't there now. So there's you know constant. It's it's a tricky committee to to staff, but there's there's just sometimes it's great <laughs> and it's just it's just a huge mess of turnover and and there's uh, different people every time but hopefully that's all settling down thank you um jordan yeah i just had two points i think um firstly for uh for this department i think there's been a lot of change for them recently and i think that you know and it and especially with the nature of this kind of work things tend to change very rapidly um, depending on events that are happening in the country, um, the state or at the local level. Um, but I think that this, and especially knowing that we have a position that's going to be ending um, due to the ARPA funds uh, in about a year and a half. So I think this department could definitely benefit from uh, some strategic planning. Perhaps that could be something that uh, the select board could engage in, but I think it would be good to have some sort of a plan for them and how they see their services and their staffing um, moving forward. And um, just secondly, about the uh, about the hiring, um, as somebody that's had to do me uh, hiring in a municipal setting in a previous role that I was in, I certainly understand uh, this uh, this uh, committee's concern about hiring at the higher level. I will say, however, that it's um, becoming dip more difficult to try to hire to these positions at the town level. Um, many of them, as we've just, as it's been discussed, have been unfilled for quite some time, which is what we're seeing across many municipalities. And um, the level of the trying to bring somebody in who can immediately make an impact can be a very difficult thing, especially to be able to operate in a municipal setting, which is a bit different than uh, the private sector. So. Um, I certainly echo our concerns, but we should also be, uh, we should keep in mind, um, it is, I can't stress enough, uh, very difficult to try to hire for these positions. Thank you, Jordan and Grant. Yes, uh, thank you, Christine. Um, but when we get back to voting, I do plan on supporting this. Um, I recognize the, the salaries, but I also, uh, look, we had to rehire the nurse back at a higher rate. Uh, that's pretty revealing in itself. We had to hire, rehire the same person back at a higher salary. So it's probably gonna be high, harder to hire new people in as well. And then I'm gonna, we're gonna see what the, uh, you know, this audit um, um, recommends. So I plan on supporting it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Topher. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, make a point that I think measuring metrics is gonna be important. I think it will help build support for the efforts. Um, so there may even be things just like voter turnout among certain groups could be measured. Um, Alan mentioned you know, the number of different events, that could be another one. I think it's important to, while there will be intangibles that probably can't be measured, um, that we try or that the people running this do try to come up with some metrics 
um, and show how the needle is moving because that was Jill mentioned move the needle on not so Christine rather mentioned move the needle on DEI and that's one way to show that you're moving the needle. Thank you. Josh. Uh, thank you. Um, since Annie did post that audit and I was just kind of glancing through it quickly, it seems like that might be the kernel of a strategic plan. Um, and I wonder if if Charlie or other people are in opposition to this particular budget, if it makes sense to have a chance to review that, that audit before you make that determination. So the question Josh is to Charlie, uh, does he, would he want to move to postpone a vote here so he can look at the strategic plan or the, the equity audit? Is that what you're asking? Right. I mean, I, I think in general that we've been very supportive of, the, of all of Christine's budgets. Um, and to single this one out, I understand there's a concern that it's, it's growing quickly. But since they have taken some, a big part of what they've spent this year is for that uh, audit, that we should at least take it into consideration before voting against it. Well, I did take a quick scan at it while other people were discussing this, uh, these various budgets after I learned that it was posted on the, on the uh, SharePoint. Um, I, I don't think I want to stop the Finance Committee from uh, taking a vote if the committee wants to go ahead and vote. That, that's okay with me. I, I'm just not going to support it. Okay, thank you. But thanks for the Thanks for the offer. Um, all right, Toe for a second time. Yeah, um, I actually think Josh has, having read through the report at the audit in some detail, I think Josh has a very good idea there that it might be helpful for the committee to have everyone have a chance to really review it. Um, whether, you know, I'm not saying it's going to change all everybody's vote, but you know, it, it, it is, as Josh said, it's, you know, they, they've put a lot of resources into that might be good to um, have everybody have a chance. Um, since not, it seems like not everybody's had a chance to review it. I am disinclined to want to postpone the vote unless there is a motion that passes to postpone the vote. But I do think um, we would be, uh, we should all uh, look at that, at that report at some point. Um, but uh, not hearing a motion to postpone, um, I want to bring this to a, a vote. Uh, anything further from anybody, especially anyone I, we haven't heard from yet? All right, we are voting on the DEI budget. Um, it's been moved and seconded. Um, all right, Jordan. Yes. Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. No. John. No. Annie. Yes. Ellen Jones. Yes. Topher. Yes. Peggy. Yes. Altosti? No. Dean Carmen? No. Dave McKenna? Dave? Is Dave here? Yes. All right. So I have. Twelve four and four knows. So the budget has passed. And um, do we have AYCC left? AYCC in the Council on Aging Transportation. Um, let me just get to the uh, number for Council on Aging. Um, so I move um, the Council on Aging budget for revenue and expenses of $194,644. Okay, Julian. I don't think that's correct. 
What page are we on? What but I am on 175. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. Wrong, wrong. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Can't read tonight. $127,549. Second. Is this Second. for AYCC or the Council on Aging Transportation? Council on Aging Transportation. Second. If I may say, so I think we should be voting. Uh, Madam Chairman, may I make a comment? Sure. Uh, we should be voting uh, both the uh, revenue number and the uh, expense number. Yes. But in vote, yes? Yeah. So revenue and expenses of revenue of 127,549 and revenue of 127,549, revenue and expenses. Second. Um, any, any discussion? All right, everyone understand what we're voting on? All right, Jordan? Yes. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Annie? Yes. Alan Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. Altosti? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. Dave McKenna? Yes. Right. That's unanimously approved. And now we have AYCC. And what page is that? Okay. Page 180. Is there a motion? Uh, I move acceptance of the AYCC budget with the expenses totaling $1,355,382 and the revenues totaling $1,355,382. Um, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, Alan Jones. Question? Uh, Okay, I'd like to, I wanted to make a comment about the Council of Aging Transportation and maybe after this vote. All right, you don't have... Um, no, this, this isn't about AYCC. Uh, I put it up for the last one. Can, all right. can, can you bring it back after this vote? Sure. All right. All right, so we're, we're um, about to vote on the AYCC budget. Any, any discussion? All right, seeing no hands, Jordan? Yes. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Annie? Yes. Annie? Ellen Jones? Yes. Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy. Yes. Altosti. Yes. Dean. Yes. And Dave. Yes. All right. That budget has passed unanimously. Um, now back to Alan Jones in Council on Aging. Okay. Yeah. On, on transportation, I, I guess I was just wondering if it would be appropriate for the Finance Committee to take any sort of motion on a resolution or something to start putting in action the elimination of that as an enterprise fund. I mean, how, how do we, it seems like there is some preference, including uh, Christine, to do that. Should we, you know, take, take some action to start that process? What would people think? And maybe a resolution, maybe a comment in the finance committee report or maybe just, you know, you and Sandy talking. I, I, I don't know what the, I, I think it's a good idea and I just don't want it to fall through the cracks. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Grant? Um, well, thank you, Christine. Um, well, wonder why it was established, two things, wondered why it was established as an enterprise fund in the first place. 
um, may or may not matter. Um, you know, and the second thing, it's probably just as it might be worth it to wait until she meets with the, uh, the controller. Ida. That's it. Thanks. Altasti? Yeah, I, I don't think we need a vote and a formal resolution. I think uh, perhaps Christine can put it on her uh, to-do list after town meeting is finished, along with Annie and maybe one other person to just uh, approach the new manager and Christine and I, uh, Ida about whether there's a better option to look at other options for this fund. That's all. You know, maybe the enterprise the best, or maybe it should be a revolving fund. Uh, but but I think that the three of them can explore it with the new manager after town meeting. If the if the chairman's willing to do that. Absolutely. Dean. Yeah, so I I largely agree with what Al just said. Um, the only thing I would sort of add to it is I think it that it probably just warrants a sentence in the finance committee report. You know, the finance committee is, you know, is can start concerns, I don't like the word, but just someone that says, hey, we're thinking about this, we're looking into it, we might be back in the future to tell you it's, if we want it to go away. That way, if, we, if there is a conclusion reached that in spring of 2024 20, it's resolved, at least we can stand in front, you could stand in front of that meeting and say, you know, at last year's meeting we told you we were looking at it. Here's the work we performed. Here's the result we arrived at. And now we would like your endorsement yeah. versus just showing up and telling them out of the blue. Madam Chairman, in line with past practice. Uh, Damn it. Chairman. Damn it. I, I, I agree with that um, suggestion. Dean, not uh, your. I'll write it tonight. That's fine. Right, right, <laughs> write, this, write this sentence. All right. <laughs> or two. Yeah. Thank you, Dean. All right, anything else? Um, all right, we have only a few minutes left. Um, I don't know if anyone has any other budgets for tonight, but I think we won't deal with them, but I, there is something I think we can quickly deal with. Um, if people look at um, page 195 of, their, of the budget, um, and it deals with, deals with appropriations for uh, committees and commissions and town celebrations and events. Um, so for the new people, um, um, two things, um, well, a couple of things. We, we, we have to um, vote on appropriations for town committees and commissions and for town celebrations. It has been, um, the policy of the finance committee that if these organizations, these groups are not seeking more funding than they, than they got the prior year, we don't ask them to come in and, and defend their request. They, 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 we don't ask them to appear before us for a hearing on their budget. Um, we essentially um, agree to it, unless there's a particular budget, a particular commission that we have uh, questions on. The other policy of the Finance Committee is that we never punish anyone for not spending money that's been appropriated. So you will see, um, for example, um, uh, Envision Arlington, uh, they've, we've been giving them a $3,000 budget, but they haven't been spending $3,000. We're not going to punish them and reduce their budget. We're, we'll just continue to give them what they've been asking for and any money that they don't spend is returned to the general fund at the end of the year. What I would like to do now, um, I wanna get a sense of from the group, whether there is any of these committees or commissions that we need to have come in. Um, and I, I, I want to point out that nobody is asking for um, any additional funds than they got last year. Oh, uh, Christine, I have not reached out to them yet. Um, well, it's in the, um, I'm assuming that the town manager's budget 
um, they're not they have they're not going to be asking for more money. Is there any reason we should? No. Think? What usually happened? What 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 happened at least last year is that I emailed all of the contacts for these commissions to um, see if they were requesting any more money because usually the budget just includes whatever was there last year, and that is where we get our requests for increases. And I think we got like one last year. Charlie, I see your hand up. Yes. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Um, I don't see the Water Bodies Commission on this list, the Water, water Bodies Committee. Am I, am That's I... a separate Warren article. This okay. is These are appropriations that go this into- is, uh, Into the one up article. Appropriation okay, articles. thank you. Thank you. Sophie? Um, I, I would like to at least reach out uh, maybe as the liaison to, to the Disability Commission just to see if what they're spending it on. I think my concern last year was sometimes they were spending things on that I thought maybe the town should be paying for for certain um, trainings and programs. And it was sort of getting not forced, but suggested that they use their funds instead of the town using its funds. So I just want to touch base with them on that. And then the arts, um, I feel like when they're, I mean, personally, when it's 35,000, I mean, I'd like to hear from them, hear what they're spending, because that's sort of a salary amount. So to the extent it raises to a salary level, I think it'd be good for us to hear what it's being spent on. But that's just my personal opinion. With regard to the Disability Commission, can I ask you, Sophie, to reach out to them yes. and um, find out um, whether they're asking for the same amount of money and um, determine if, they're, if they want a hearing or if, we, if there's any information that we should know about, all right? Since you have been dealing with them, you have been our, our liaison or you were last year. Will do. Um, Al Tosti? Yeah, I, I just, uh, I agree we should continue with the same policy. You know, th th most of these are small dollars and big amounts of work uh, on the part of volunteers. Uh, the two committees agree with Sophie that we have heard from are the two bigger ticket items, the Commission on Disability for 25,000 and the Arts and Culture for 35. You know, that we've asked them to come in and just explain what's happening and uh, very briefly, you know, not, we're not going to take hours on it, but I, I think those two committees we should hear from. Okay. Topher? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to make sure I'm clear, like we're looking at 195, 196, and 197, but we're not getting into town celebrations and events. I just want to make um, sure I'm new. I'm trying to make sure we're looking at that. I, I well, primarily we're looking at the committees and commissions, but I would also include the 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 um, okay. So the town celebrations. One ninety eight also, but then not in, the things after that. I see the water bodies there, so that's that's separate. Right. right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, this is what we'll do. Um, Sophie will reach out to the disability commission. Um, to possibly ask them to come in. Um, Tara, will you reach out to arts and culture and schedule um, a time when they can come in? Yes. And then as to all others, uh, can you send an email? And if they are not asking for more money than they got last year, tell them they don't have to come in. Okay. All right. Anything else on that, Charlie? Yes, I, I, I'm concerned about the water bodies. Uh, they have a, a lot of money and a big reserve. Um, I, you know, I think I, I do think we should be looking at what's going on there. Well, now we get again. We're getting into the Warren articles, and oh, Al, okay. Ta okay. Al Tosti will is is our warrant officer. And we'll have an opportunity to discuss which warrant articles we will want 
to conduct hearing ons in which we do not. So let's hold off on the water bodies for the time being. Thank you, got it, thank you. All right, um, anything else? Madam Chairman? Yes, Al. I think on the water bodies, we hear them every year. And that is, as Charlie said, a big ticket item. Uh, so I think Tara should schedule them to come in, you know, in March. I think they're one of the ones that always, should, you know, that we always have, and we should. That, that's fine with me. I'm, I'm always the one who has the questions for them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Tara, if you could do that, that would be good as well. Thank you. Um, and Annie is working on getting Minuteman to come in. Any any um, new words on that, Annie? No, I proposed March 1st. I haven't heard no, but I haven't heard yes. And I tried to include everybody who's been trying to coordinate that in one email, which hopefully everybody saw. Did you see that email, Chris? Yeah, I did. So I'm waiting to hear from either Julia or Nikki that the March 1st works and that a meeting, an intermediate meeting with Dr. Dawson will work out. Um, so. All right, thank you. All right, who will have budgets for Monday? <clears throat> Madam Chairperson. Yes, uh, Dave. We're still waiting for responses from the budget uh, director on the, uh, the questions that we had, as we mentioned, as Sophie mentioned to you. Do you think you'll have them by Monday? Um, I don't know. Uh, we're, we're hoping, but, but I don't know at this point. Um, Charlie? I think we'll have uh, the comptroller's budget by Monday. And uh, and I think also uh, from right Topher, we'll have the assessor's budget, right? Um, I hope so. Yeah, we had an aborted meeting today, but hopefully we will get to meet and get those questions answered. All right, great. All right, well, we'll meet on Monday. Hopefully we'll have those and maybe a few other Warren articles. Um, if, uh, if anyone can uh, work real hard between now and then and, and do it, get a budget ready for us, that would be great. The more we can uh, schedule, the quicker we can get through our work. Chris, have we seen a draft warrant yet? Uh, Al Tosti? No. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've talked to Doug. I've talked to the selectman. I've talked to Doug Heim. Uh, Doug said he'd get back to me on getting uh, an initial draft. Uh, sometimes it's like pulling teeth. I remember last year we didn't get a draft warrant until the last week in, in February. Yeah. Uh, so I'm planning to call them tomorrow. Okay. Great, thank you, Al. Um, all right, all right, uh, Sophie. I don't know if ever, we heard, uh, Dave and I heard while we were doing our budget reviews in the departments earlier this week that there was now talk of a special meeting in the fall and all the zoning um, articles getting taken off this meeting of the on a special meeting in the fall. So I don't know if that is news or not for anybody. That's that's definitely the case, um, and it's it's not all the zoning articles, but it's at least all of the ARB proposed articles. There may be some citizen zoning articles that do not move. All right. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We Aye. are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank Aye. you. Thank you. Thank you.